Okay, I'm going to give you guys an opportunity now to ask some questions of our esteemed panel. So if you have a question, um, raise a hand, we'll get a microphone to you, and um, we'll get some questions answered, or if you want someone to elaborate on a point that they've already made. Um, anyone? Don't go all raising your hands at once. Mm -hmm. Hi, um, uh, I would like to ask you, you're, a lot of what you're talking about sounds like the getting to yes, yeah. right? Getting to be able to say yes to, to employees. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that I think a lot of employees would say that they encounter is the no's, not from the executive's office, but from sort of the mid-level. Um, it, it feels like there's some changing of hearts and minds that needs to happen. How are you... Uh, how are you going to do that, Nancy? <laughs> well, now, let me, can I start yeah. and then you can give the actual professional answer. Uh, <laughs> you know, the, the, the higher up you are in the organization, the less you have to worry about making mistakes and saying yes, right? Like, yeah. only the people of the county can fire me. So you can come to me with some harebrained idea and I'll go, yeah, sure, let's do it. If you're a middle manager, there's a lot more, I think, concern that your supervisor is going to come down on you for having allowed a mistake to happen. We have to work that out of our practices and our culture, right? Ben. I, I think you did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take some time. Um, middle managers are in the hardest position. You know, they are responsible for results. They are stretched thin. Um, they often have no time to talk to their employees, much less say yes or no. Um, and we really need to shift um, what their role is, both for them and for their higher ups, and give them some grace of they're going to fail a little bit. If they're empowering employees to go make mistakes and to try things, that means mistakes are going to happen. And we've had, before this administration, we had a a, a whole decade of no bad things can happen, which meant you operated out of fear. And it wasn't a pleasant place to work. So for a lot of our middle managers, that's still the mantra. So it's going to take time. Thanks. More questions? And, uh, can I just tag on to that? Yeah. We, we have consciously tried to get away from that no bad things can happen. The only thing I ask is, if bad things are happening, you should let me know. <laughs> right? <laughs> before they can become worse. <laughs> yes, very true. Any questions in the back here? I can get a microphone to you. No, it's one. Right here, okay. I know we previously talked about the labor negotiations and how much that impacts what we can do with our employees, particularly when it comes to um, total rewards. Um, I don't think that training and development and education benefits has been a part of that previously is our intention going forward to make that as a part of our total rewards package. When I'm looking at our competition as the employment manager and I look at things like Starbucks now does um, tuition reimbursement for part-time employees, that's what we're recruiting against. Um, how is that going to affect our decision making? And I did hear you say that we're, we're looking at more flexibility. Is that going to be a part of that? No, I'd love for you to do this, okay. even though you're not in labor relations. <laughs> yes. um, so there's it's two answers to that. So I, I firmly believe tuition reimbursement is one of those benefits that should be at the table because it's a huge driver. When we're competing for transit part-time transit operators, any kind of part-time work, um, we are we are behind the eight ball on that. Um, and that will help our employees learn and grow. Um, so depending, again, where they are in their life cycle, that may be something they want as part of that total rewards package. The, but we have an obligation as the employer to ensure that our employees have training opportunities for those core technical skills, or like I said, their skills become stale, and I don't want that bargained away. So, mm -hmm. so we have an obligation to ensure that that's there as a fundamental um, responsibility. It's a partnership. We make that available to employees, and they have to take advantage of them to stay employed and to, and to continue to learn and grow. And a lot, of, a lot of the training was something that was not bargained as part of the compensation. It was something that we provided because it's in the interests of the county as an employer. And a lot of that, most of it, most all of it, got mm -hmm. cut uh, during the Great Recession. And so we've been in this process, even while we're still financially challenged, of rebuilding and rebuilding the capacity 
provide people training and education to advance in their careers. I could talk about this uh, yeah. with you for hours, but unfortunately we can't do it anymore today. So thank you all for joining me here today and for um, especially you for joining us yeah, here from you. Portland. Really appreciate Pleasure. that. Thanks. Um, and thank you all for joining us as well. If you have any other questions or comments, you know how to reach these folks on uh, the interoffice email. Um, that's going to do it for us. Thanks for joining us. Thanks.